Welcome to The Journey. Today we're gonna to talk about how to get started with Google Data Studio for your business. So technology, it's moving too fast, even for us millennials, but also for your business, there's too much data. And when there's too much data, what happens? I don't know what happens. Analysis paralysis. Same thing happens when I go out to eat to a restaurant that's actually a vegan restaurant. Cause you know how it is, especially for your vegans and vegetarians, you go to a restaurant and you're just ordering off that side menu because there's not many options. Then you go to a vegan restaurant. Oh my gosh, you can order from the whole menu. And I just sit there and the waiter comes back like five times. The point of this story, analysis paralysis. So all this analysis paralysis and all this data and all this information overload uh, can get overwhelming, right? Uh, so Google's Data Studio is what we're gonna be talking about and I'm gonna be showing you doing a live little demo here and how to really kind of disseminate some of that information into a nice and easy to use dashboard. And the cool thing is it's, it's customizable. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a lot to take in. So if you're not like super data driven, you probably should hire someone on your team to do this or hire someone to take care of this for you. We'll give you some of the basics of using Google Analytics and Google Search Console. All right, so I've never used Google Data Studio. I'm super stoked to learn more about it. I'm a little nervous because you said there's a lot to it. So where it do you start? Overwhelming. So yeah. you just go over to datastudio.google.com. Luckily I've been here before, so it types for me because I can't type. And then it's gonna have you sign in if you haven't done so already. You click a button right there and then you'd launch right into essentially the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Now, what's cool about this is Google gives you a bunch of templates to kind of look at and better understand it. Because if you if you don't know what you're doing, you want something already done for you, you can just kind of pick and play with your own data. That works for me. Absolutely perfect. So let me show you like a search console report and what this kind of looks like. And you can see, so for those of you that don't know, Google's search console, it essentially tells you your search rankings and information analytics. So how often your page comes up with certain keywords, how many people click through it, all sorts of great information on the search engines. And that's what this is doing here. So you can see how many impressions versus the last 30 days, URL clicks, which landing pages they've jumped on, the queries they use like Google, Google Shop, clothing store, uh, and then what part of the world they're in. So you can get all this information. That's super helpful. And it's already created for you. You can click use as template if you'd like to. But again, if you have no idea where to get started, those are your best bet and then kind of pick and play from there. But we're actually gonna make one from scratch. Oh boy. Are you ready? I don't know. I'm not ready, but let's go. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and click blank report right here. And then it's gonna ask you to add a data source. Now it has some sample data if you'd like here, um, but I've already added a couple of data sources from a very old website I had way, way back. Uh, it was called Plans Yet. The site's still live because it's like all things, you just wanna keep it going. Yeah. So you click add your data source to add to that report and it's gonna throw in some content here. So right off the bat, it's gonna throw in a table. We can manipulate this however we want, but it's gonna mm -hmm. show you the organic views, uh, none because it doesn't know what those sources are coming from, and then referrals, things for like social media or other websites. But we're gonna get rid of this because I want to essentially make this pretty, right? Dashboards are supposed to be pretty and easily digestible. Yeah, let's give it a makeover. Let's give it a makeover. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna have a cool little title. Let's have a shape up here like so. What color? Uh, I would love to go for kind of like an ocean sea blue. Well, I was thinking like seafoam green. Oh, that's it. That's, that's it. it. You are a California girl. I All mean, right. just throw some palm trees up there. And then we're going to add some surfer. text. My awesome, I told you I cannot type. My awesome report. And then on the right, you mm -hmm. have all your style properties. So you can manipulate almost every part of the elements and graphs and data that we put in. Mm -hmm. You can modify and make it all pretty. Cool. So I obviously want to make- Your font's not that pretty though. I'm working on it. <laughs> it looks cool. She's so demanding. Bold it, make it a little larger. White, it'll stand out. It's crisp. That's aggressive. You're aggressive, <laughs> if we're being honest. <laughs> oh gosh. Cool, my that awesome report, good. perfect, right? Yes. Now let's actually add some charts and functions, all sorts of cool stuff. Ooh. 
So you have your overall theme before we jump into the chart. So you can style it quickly if you'd like. Mm -hmm. um, however, whatever works best for your brand, your business. I know That's people awesome. that do this for a service, they usually make this uh, into a nice report and like print it off to their clients or send them it to them. That way it looks all pretty. But we're gonna choose that dark background there and we're gonna add a chart. So a couple Great. cool things to you probably want to know about with your site is how many people are visiting your site. So if you click add chart, you can go to sessions right here and it's going to pop up sessions. Now I can't, I can see it. It changed. Look at that. The how themes and the that? styles, it all works together. So it has my page it's views. It's like a new, it's magic. Something like that. Google's smart, I guess. Very smart. <laughs> but I want to still manipulate some things. I want to add a border. Okay, so when we're looking at page views, 1.5 thousand total ever in the life of this. So glad you asked. So on the right hand side here, you have data mm -hmm. and you have style. So style makes it all pretty. Data is the actual information it's pulling from. And you can see down here, it shows the last 28 days. Oh, okay. Uh, and Exclude if you want to do today. a comparison date, you can choose none, that little drop down there, choose that. We'll just do previous period. And uh -huh. that's going to do the previous 30 days. Got it. Let that update. So you can see there's a 24% increase in my page views. Now I have that all nice and pretty. And what's cool about this is if you want to copy and paste it, you can right click, copy, yeah. paste, paste the same information in but I don't want page views and page views and page views. I mean, as a business owner, I want page views, but as yeah. far as data goes, it doesn't make sense. No. So, so what can... else do you want to look at? So on the left-hand side or right-hand side, right-hand side or left-hand side, it's confusing. <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee, um, <laughs> but you can change the metric. So if I don't want page views, I can choose something else down the page. You can kind of go through and see what makes the most sense for your business. But what if you don't know what makes sense for your business? Uh, use a template. <laughs> and then learn Good. from there, Hire right? a data person. No, because there, there is a ton of information that it, it gives you. You can kind of go around and play with this and add different charts. Like I can add a geographic map so I can see where everyone's coming from. That's probably a good idea, because if my target audience is the US, but yeah. I see most people coming from maybe the UK or Australia. What about if you're a local business sense. and you just want to know what cities or, you know, within the neighborhood, like who's coming to my bar in North Park in San Diego? Like, are they coming over from, you know, La Jolla or University Heights or? to help you know where to market. Oh, you can get, okay. You can get super granular. Great, that was my question. Yeah, so under dimension right here, uh, you can change. So city, there's continent, there's country, there's uh, all different okay. modifications that you can add here. Yeah. And so you can see that granular data. Like I'm getting a ton of people from Washington, which is crazy because we're in Washington right now. Yeah. A lot of people from Texas and things like that on a site that I haven't updated in a while, but people are still going to. And then there's lots of other cool charts you can add here as well. So if I want to see a time series chart, I can pop that right there. But back to like analysis paralysis here, I kind of, I'm already freezing up just with all the options. Right. It, it's, it is a ton, um, which is, is why I would kind of recommend if, if going in and add a chart and then seeing what it pops up by default. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see kind of the information that it brings. Like this will show a, a, a pie chart of the organic versus referral and then traffic that it can't understand. Uh, mm -hmm. But on the left hand uh, side of this column here, you can basically kind of go through and add all this stuff like this. Google Data Studio is is complicated, but if as, if you kind of take the time to better understand it or at least some of the data points or yeah. watch some tutorials like this one or even use one of the templates to kind of start from all the information is there. And then once you have it set, it constantly updates and updates and updates. So you don't have to modify it again. That dashboard will always be there for you to manipulate. I like that. Cause then it's, you know, the work that you've done, you can just build upon and save you time in the future when you check like, hey, you know, what are my page views now? Or and how much of this traffic was organic versus referral? Exactly. Which how do they know what would be organic versus referral? Just curious, do you know that? So organic traffic is traffic that came from search engines. Okay. So they're searching whatever keywords that would pop up my website Yeah. and then they click on it. Referral are links from other websites, which is common like social media or someone other, mm. some, a blog that has linked to your page. Got it. Things like that. Okay, great. Okay, so what I've gathered so far, yes, this is overwhelming, but 
we're seeing a lot of data. This is Google Analytics. Can you pull any other data into this report? For example, we talk a lot about YouTube analytics. So yeah, if you want to, if you're modifying a page and you want to add more data sources, you can do that inside of this dashboard under resource and then manage added data sources. Uh, it so does I have, it all. It does it all. So I have all website data here for Google Analytics. I want to click add data source. And Holy then smoke. You can see all of the data sources you can add. Obviously, Google's going to let you pull in all of their data into your dashboard. Nearly, I don't know which what is that stuff super is. cool. YouTube is owned hey. by Google, so you can add that there. But there's also partner connectors as well. So it goes beyond just Google's data, which is super cool. So there's 162 current partners available. Wow. It's like Amazon Ads, AdRoll, uh, AppNexus, Asana Connector, all sorts of things that you can pull into a dashboard. So think of all of the different sites you go into now to mm -hmm. find different analytics, whether it's your sales data, your website traffic, things like that. You can essentially Salesforce. build your dashboard right here and have your team modify it and things like that. What's cool is that this is all done in the cloud, if you will. So you can, people can modify it at the same time mm -hmm. and be here at the same time. In real time. OK, this is great. Your report is, in fact, awesome. There's a lot of information here, but how do I use it for my business? So for coffee and kickflips. Yeah, I think the the most important reason to use Google Data Studio is because it's a it's essentially a one stop shop once you have it all set up. I mean, think about how much time it's going to take you to log into Google Analytics and then start to look through all the information it gives you uh, from page views to bounce rates to all these different things, and then Search Console, then YouTube, and then everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Instead, you can have in one dashboard with the metrics that makes the most sense to you. Yes. So if you're really focused on increasing your website sales conversions, you can have that up here your sales conversions and then traffic and then whatever makes sense for you in one place. You only check that once, you're good, and you can say, spend the rest of the time to do whatever you want, run your business, coffee and kickflips, go on a trip to Tahiti or Spain or Barcelona, wherever you just got back from, <laughs> do whatever you need to do. All right, Neely, that report was in fact awesome. Are you feeling overwhelmed? I'm feeling overwhelmed. But hey, if you've used Google Data Studio before and you have some tips, comment below. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you get these episodes first. This is The Journey. We'll see you next time.